about 7,500. You want to do that? I'll do it if I don't want to get 7,500. Don't even. You're a great champion, Bo, here. You're going to put 7,500 to my internet. Hello, calves. You guys hadn't been on camera in a while. Hey guys, Dusty Baker of Cross Summers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. Hanging out with the calves. Uh, some of these that we raised and some from the Texas herd um, over at the original place, as you can tell, the iconic silos. But winter storm is coming and we are preparing for that right now. Kevin's already put out a bunch of hay. Um, we're getting waters ready. We're getting all prepared for this winter storm. I know some of you may be laughing like, ha ha ha, winter storm, whatever. It, it may not get as much snow as some of you guys up in the north. It may not get as cold. It's supposed to get cold here. But what's bad about Oklahoma is uh, we have ice and we deal with a lot of ice and it's very dangerous. It's, there's always power outages and uh, there's a lot of issues that can happen. And so... Thank gosh we raised bison, a very, very tough animal. Hope you guys are ready. I gotta get everything ready and I'm gonna bring you along. Got some other stuff to talk to you about. Got some new things I'm gonna tell you about. And I wanna talk to you about the, just got back from Denver for the National Bison Association. Got lots of stuff to talk to you about I'm gonna feature today and uh, get ready for this storm as well. So I'm gonna, one of the first things I'm gonna do is take our, one ton feed buggy up to uh, Stillwater Millen, over to Stillwater Millen, and we're gonna get some feed in that because it's for those calves that we're feeding right now um, over here at the original place. So, uh, some old sheet metal flapping in the wind from this awesome old barn. So, um, I'm gonna go get this filled up in Davis, and then we're gonna stop by at the Ponderosa and take care of all those critters. All right, got that taken care of. Wife's out here and Brooks is out here. Um, they're gonna help me. Brooks is gonna hop in with me and uh, we're gonna put a bell of hay out for um, Big Joe and them and get them ready and set so they'll have some hay for the next several days and plenty to munch on. So we still give them cubes as well, but uh, Marissa or Brooks are gonna help me do that. Let's go get the skids here.
had it running out here and I had it mounted right here and uh, I kept getting water on it on the GFCI outlet kept getting water on it and it finally went out so I took you guys opinion I got a new one I got an all-weather one actually and I'm gonna mount it actually inside here protect it from the weather and whatnot so uh, I'm gonna get it out of elements and I've thought about that before but after dealing with this and we can run this actually in through the riser and uh, come down here and so this will never go through water basically um, will it go through water but then it will come out and show up down in here and we can plug it into our outlet here so that's what I'm gonna do real quick So here's the heating element float. So main line comes in right here. And now I've just pulled this through. Now that I've rewired this, I'm gonna set this carefully in there. I'll adjust it, plug this in, and now everything's really protected by the weather. And so I'm trying to get all this done before this uh, winter blast comes through. All right, so everything's protected in here. I got it plugged in for our heating element. We'll have to wait for a while to see the temperature rise. But according to my GFCI, it's got a green light on it. This is an all weather one, 20 amp. So now it's protected in this housing and uh, hopefully this will help keep the bison from messing with it and um, keep the outlet protected. So if any moisture does hit it, I noticed that they, they uh, will pop and they'll stop right there. So um, this one obviously went that went bad. And so hopefully that helps. But um, here, some of you talked about, I've got to build a frame to come all the way around this water system. Um, but the bison shouldn't move with it really. Uh, but I do need to come back with some tubing um, and try to frame this out. Push it. Go ahead and shut that gate for me. All right, lock it up. Here, let dad help you. Okay, here. Right, now wrap it around here. This way, this way, put it right here. Push it. Okay. Can you pull it? Pull it. Uh oh. It's a Maya. No, 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 no. I'm going to clean this one out. Go ahead and put it under the barn just to keep some weather off of it at least that'll help okay we got this flowing it'll this is on the south side part of our loafing shed so this will help uh, just for that extra protection from the freezing temperatures Hey, hey, hey. Well, we got everything wrapped up. Got waters filled up just in case. Got one put underneath the barn and whatnot. But um, you guys check this out. This is a beautiful sunset here. Just 
Awesome. Look how pretty that is, Brooks. Look at the sun. It's pretty. So I was also gonna let you guys know about how the conference went. The conference went awesome. One of my favorite things about the National Bison Association Conference is you get to meet lots of people and you get to hang out with some friends that you don't get to see that often. Do you wanna hang out with that? There you go. Um, and uh, I love meeting new people and I love meeting people that are interested in raising bison. A lot of guys are there because they're interested in raising bison. They want to learn. And that is, there's no greater place to go all in one spot and, and to learn from others. And there's a lot of experienced bison producers there that have been in the industry for a long time. And um, so I love going there because I'm always trying to learn. And there's a lot of those guys that want to get in the bison business. And before they get their feet really wet, they um, go and learn. And that's a great place to do it. And so I support the National Bison Association and getting started in that. And if you haven't, you can even become a friends of the National Bison Association. And um, uh, there is a membership for that if you are interested in doing that. Um, you can be a friends, part of the friends group. Or you can be a part of the friends uh, membership. You can uh, be a... <clears throat> You can pay a full membership and it gives you access to a lot of resources or if you just want to help the National Bison Association. Uh, when you do that, you help producers like me, uh, producers all, all across the National Bison Association. Um, or you can be an actual member and you can go to the actual conference. And, and, and I, I try to go there every year if I can. Um, and uh, there's a little munchkin hanging out with me. But... Um, uh, I, I try to go to that every year and I, you know, love to meet the people there that are interested in raising bison and whatnot. So great time together. I thought the prices were up um, a little bit compared to last year. The top bull went for about $20,000 um, and, and that's a little bit higher than the past. Oh, yeah. You have the sound cat <laughs> and, and the classifications there. You got uh, two year old bulls all the way down to calves. And so. Um, there's no cow class. There's two-year-old bred heifers, bull yearlings. There's a yearling heifers, bull and heifer calves there as well. And those are some of the best animals. They always go to that sale. Some of the biggest um, name producers are a part of that sale. So just a great event. And if you're ever interested in joining the National Bass Association, you can always contact me and I can kind of point you in the right direction. I'll always put the link in my description as well. Did you get it? Don't let it knock you down. Okay, we'll fix it. You're good. Just learning. Oh, get did it get grass in it? Okay, just knock it out. There you go. Um, just some news from us, guys. Uh, I am going to sell some uh, heifer calves. I got some heifer calves that I'm willing to sell. If you guys know of anybody or um, anybody that is interested in selling some heifer calves, um, one of them it will be out of Big Joe, um, and then most of them are out of Dunbar. So we're finally getting into that stage where um, we have some offspring uh, that we can sell now. And we do keep some of ours back, but we have some uh, that we can sell now at this point. So... Got some t-shirts for sale as well. You guys check it out. Got something also coming back that we had around the Thanksgiving time. So stay tuned for our jerky. We've got a new a stick flavor out. Um, we had just a regular stick flavor out, our original, and just an original jerky. And that turned out really well. I'll be, I'm a huge fan of jerky. And so the jerky and the uh, sticks... Uh, the meat sticks are coming back around, uh, so stay tuned for that. And um, if anybody's interested in um, um, purchasing bison, you can contact me. I've got some calves for sale. Hey, thank you guys for watching us. Thank you for being a part of this. Just getting ready for this winter storm, and then we'll have some, I'm sure, a good video after the winter storm. We'll see what happens in Oklahoma. You just never know. Guys, yesterday it was 70 degrees and sunny. Sunny and 70. In uh, less than 24 hours, it's going to be... Uh, 
um, into the teens and below. So uh, possibly uh, rain and then ice, sleet, snow, you name it. That's just how it goes here in Oklahoma. As my uh, papa would say is, uh, excuse my language, but damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. Thank you guys for watching us. No, 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 don't touch it. No, that's poop. That's bison poop. Don't mess with that. There you go. Just kick it. Kick it. Nope. Don't touch it. Kick it. Yeah, don't touch that. Gross. Shoo. Hey. Say shoo.